we are at Jackie and Jesse's house today. How old is your little guy? He's three. Three. So we're going to tackle toys. And my disclaimer is no judgment when it comes to toys because we all know how they accumulate, how they come in. We contribute to it, relatives and family members, and it's just something we expect to have with kids. And so today I want to take Jackie through my really simple approach to simplifying toys where you can get through in like 15 minutes because most of us don't have a lot of extra energy <laughs> to dedicate to this. We're gonna try it out, but I'm giving you complete permission that if any point you're like, it's too far, this isn't working, I, I really want you to chime in and, and say so. Oh, and there's a really unexpected surprise at the end. So the first thing we were gonna do, so you have some toys here in the living room and then some in the bedroom. And so I think it's helpful if we can bring them all out together so we can see everything that we're working with. And then from there, we're gonna be able to make better decisions. And so what's really interesting is when you look at the research for kids toys, what they find is that when they had kids and they were surrounded by lots and lots of toys, that the kids played with a toy for a very short amount of time and then they went to the next one and the next one and they just like bounced around and they never really got fully engaged with the toys and so that caused them to become bored very quickly. On the other hand, when they put kids in a highly simplified environment, very few toys available to them, they found that the kids were engaged much longer and entered into more imaginative and creative play. They also found that the kids, if there were multiple kids around, that they played better with others, they had better social skills, they were more creative, and they could play for much longer periods of time on their own. And so as parents, that second experience, that's actually what we're going for, <laughs> right? The problem is, like I said to Jackie, we have all these things working against us. Okay, so we got all the toys pulled out. Are you surprised seeing them all or? Yeah, it's really overwhelming to see them all in one place mm -hmm. and like how much we actually have. And I was just telling Jackie and Jesse, I'm like, super normal. <laughs> this is very average, if not below average, I think, for the amount of toys that you have. So you're not doing bad, right? But I think we can do a little bit better. So my, <clears throat> my convictions around toys come from two things, research and our own experience with our own kids. But what's telling us we need all this? Marketing. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. We see the commercials um, and they say, if your kids can't entertain yourself, you just haven't found the right tool yet. <laughs> right? So yeah. keep bringing more in. Uh, we also have peer pressure for every birthday, Christmas. And then we're also pulling on our own experience growing up. So things mm -hmm. we would have hoped that we would have had growing up, we thought it would have been fun right. to have. So we have all of these things working against us, but the truth is that kids thrive in a very simplified environment with toys. So again, all that to say, you're not bad or wrong. Like if you have a lot of toys at home, that's what our culture tells us. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's just completely normal. Maybe we'll pull out some of these garbage trucks. He doesn't play with all of them. Sure. All the time, right? No. Okay. Well, the question is how many do you play with? <laughs> <laughs> you can only drive one at a time. It's mine Yeah. If it's not like yeah. a yes all the time, then let's quarantine it. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah, quarantine it. So like I said, one of the easiest tactics when it comes to simplifying kids' toys is just to pick out a couple categories of toys that we know our kids play with. So I'm putting you on the spot, but we were talking with Jesse a little bit too. What are the categories of toys that Nolan really likes to play with? Um, his trucks mm -hmm. and his food. Yep. Um, those are the big ones. Yeah. I feel like, mm -hmm. yeah. And especially, we especially like open-ended ones like blocks and Legos. Jackie said that her little guy was really into garbage trucks. I hear that so frequently now. And then also he had a little play kitchen with food that he played with a lot. And so we're doing kind of like a reverse declutter where we're picking out the stuff that we know they like and play with and we're kind of like letting the rest fall to the wayside. Donate. <laughs> Does that make noise? We're done with that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you think about that um, microwave and coffee maker? Yeah, he's kind of over it. Sure. And that's okay. He's you know, if it was for fine a, too. <laughs> a season and now yep. he's moved on. To a lot of these I feel like I refer to Jesse if it's like a gift from his family. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> like, makes perfect sense. And how about the shopping cart? Like really caution against pick stuff. Okay. Yep, <laughs> let's get rid of that. Okay. I also want to really encourage you to really, really, really think twice about the big toys and are your kids actually playing with them 
or did we just think they would? I bought so many big toys in the past, like Barbie dream house, big car ramps, uh, one of those plastic like playhouses. That was huge. That took up a ton of space. Doll houses, so many different big items. And I thought my kids were gonna love them. I thought they were gonna play with them for hours. I thought when I was a kid, I would have loved to have that. And so often they didn't. Um, he doesn't really. No. <laughs> Hard, see? Yeah, no. <laughs> the one word of advice that I remember that's because I always get little snippets of like when I yeah. watch stuff, you're like, okay, so I know you got it as a gift, but you have to remember it's your space. Yeah. yeah. They give it to you, but then yeah. it's After your that, space. You like, get to... with it. Yep. Yeah. And I think the tough part too, like you want your kids to be happy. Like, yeah. You yeah. want them to play and totally. have fun and be happy. Yeah. But again, if you're in a smaller home like Jackie and Jesse, then every bit of real estate inside your home counts. And so we really have to look at the big stuff and and they have to really use it a lot for us to justify keeping it. Nice. All right, we're doing good. Okay, so we yeah. have two of the Paw Patrol things. Does he play with both of them? <laughs> Which one, the tower? He, yeah, so this was a recent one. So I think that, so that was a thrift store find. Yep. Um, he plays with both, but it takes up a lot of real estate. If I was so going to hang on to one, I would hang on to that one because it was a Yep. Okay. And so they did decide to keep one of the Paw Patrol car ramps and then let the other one go um, along with some of this other bigger stuff. And I thought that was such a wise decision because it really does make their living room feel so much better now. Um, so are we okay with this letting this garbage. table go? It was free. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are we supposed to be okay with the uh, where did my table go? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know your son. Yeah. If it's like, oh, where did it go? But then you're, I'm yeah. on to the next thing, then and I just let it go. Yeah, with the tables, I think. So his grandpa like stained that table, made yeah. it in there, so mm -hmm. that. So that one's more special. special. Yeah. yeah. I think if I could help parents understand one thing about kids' toys, it would be this: we have kids. We have toys because our hope is that the toys will help keep the kids occupied. They'll play with them, they'll spend their time, and they'll be happy and entertained and, and all that from it, right? And so that's what we look for toys to help facilitate in our kids' lives. But here's what I wanna propose instead, that the only thing that our kids need is their imagination, not toys. They only need their imagination and what's so cool about that is if we cultivate this and, and help them be able to use their imagination, their creativity, it goes with them wherever they go. So no matter if you're in the car for a long time or at a restaurant or on an airplane, no matter where they go, they're always able to occupy themselves and their time and to be very content and engaged. And so really, I think as parents, that's our hope. And so today, as we help Jackie and Jesse declutter their kids' toys, I want to keep this in mind and use this as a framework that we want to have toys that help support our kids imagination and their ability to play on their own. Okay, Elmo? three almost. Notice how yeah. there's three almost. Oh, there, there are, are three. three almost. Let's just keep one. Which one oh, does he gosh. like? The one in her right hand will do the, the one gift. Yeah. Okay. These can get donated yep. or we'll okay. donate those. Okay. These are doing great. Okay. Does he play with it on a regular basis? No, we can quarantine it, I think. Quarantine or donate? Okay. <laughs> 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 I know. He never really had an interest in it. Yeah. I would say my kids would. would they would play with it once. Yeah. And they would lose it. Okay, let's just donate. Okay, yeah. Good. We're doing great, you guys. This is awesome. And then I did want to just answer the question real quick. If you have older kids, who are more attached, you know, Nolan was three, so we weren't quite as worried about him missing any of this stuff. Um, but if you have older kids that are more attached, maybe they bought stuff with their own money, they got it for gifts. And so it feels more like it is very much their own personal possessions. Then I love the idea to buy toys from your kids. So literally taking a box and saying, if you fill this up, I will give you $5. I will give you $2. We did this just recently in our house and it, uh, I think it took the boys all of like three minutes <laughs> to fill up a whole box and I was only offering them $2. But especially as kids get older, usually they have something that they're saving up for or they would like to have instead. And so by giving them a small amount of money for it, we can usually move quite a bit of toys out. Also using the quarantine bin. So we were using a quarantine bin. There was a few toys that she just wasn't sure about or she thought maybe like later this winter she would wanna rotate in. So letting our kids know, this is what I did with our kids when we first simplified. 
is that I just put the extra toys into cardboard boxes. They're in the garage. If there's anything in there that you want me to go back and get out for you, just let me know and I'll go get it. And a lot of times that will give them peace of mind that the toys aren't completely gone, but it gives us an opportunity to test this out, to see how your kids feel having less clutter around them. If you look at their toy space and you feel stressed out, there's a good chance that they're feeling stressed out by it too. And again, if our if our goal is creative and imaginative play that uh, helps develop their social skills and their brains and, and all of that, and then they're feeling stressed out, that's working against us, right? So we want it to be a low stress area. So if you're feeling stressed by it, there's a good chance they're feeling stressed out by it too. So anything that's not his current stage that he's outgrown, we're gonna mm -hmm. pack away for next babies. So are these puzzles a little too young for him? Too young for him? Yeah. So we'll put those in the baby box. So then we just have like some books and, and art supplies. And uh, what I've noticed with our kids is if we keep our craft supplies really simple, they're more likely to do it and I'm more likely to let them do it because we don't have big messes. Sure. So we kind of try to just really keep the basics um, when it comes to that and that entertains them for a long time. So it's been working. So I think as we go through this, just being aware of how much inventory mm -hmm. do we want to keep and mm -hmm. manage. And for a three-year-old, how much would yeah. he realistically, is he more likely to be playing with his garbage trucks or to be using this kind of stuff? So let's just do a quick sort here and we'll sort out like the actual books okay. from like more the coloring books and um, art supplies. Well, I forgot. I bought oh, those are <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that happens, one, right? and then I added it's that on inventory. Amazon, yep. and then I returned it, and they just said keep it. So. Yep. Ooh, a garbage truck coloring book. That's yeah, right up his alley. that's awesome. And I think he forgot that he had this because it was just like in the bottom. Because it, yeah. Doesn't this feel like a lot more manageable now? Like, yeah, yeah I could see pulling that out yes. and doing some sure. some art stuff or... And it not just being like a crazy mess. Yeah. Um, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So do you, okay. do you feel like this took off more or than you thought it would or <laughs> yeah. not yet? <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I mean, this yeah, be dumped in the totally. Garbage. I never okay. thought it could yeah. become what it's come. I never realized, I thought I was the only one that struggled with clutter oh, yeah. and like too much stuff. I didn't realize it's like, no, it's like 89%. It's an untalked, yeah. it's one of those untalked about household about management yeah. things. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And, and like we never had access to this much stuff when we were growing up. Mm. This wouldn't mm -hmm. have been a problem in my house growing right. up because yep. we didn't have enough money and there wasn't, it wasn't so easy to acquire stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a newer phenomenon where it's like, Amazon can be here in two days. I can yeah. go to a thrift store. I can go to a garage sale. People are get people have mm -hmm. more disposable money, so they're mm -hmm. giving more bigger gifts. Yeah. And right. so, totally. So, what do you think of this donate pile right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> yep. So here's our quarantine box. You guys actually didn't put that much in quarantine. I think it's a really good amount. So I think that's great. If down the road you want to pull some of that stuff out, yeah. Right. And then we have our stuff for future children, so that's great too. All right, so we're gonna let Tom start bringing the donations out, so we'll get those out of here. This? Yeah. Awesome. All right, so what do you think Nolan's reaction is gonna be when he comes home? <laughs> he might say, where are all my toys? Or he could just jump in and play start playing. and love it. That yeah. was actually the first time I really like significantly did our, did our toys. Our kids were, infant through like four or five and they came home and they're like we love it down here and like Maggie's like I can do gymnastics in here and so it was not the response I was prepared like it's okay they're in quarantine bins they're they're in the garage you know mm -hmm. and I, I didn't even have to tell them that but that is a good safety net too you can be like hey we put some of your toys in a box we can pull those out later mm -hmm. if we want to um but yeah I hope he really likes it I hope it's easier for you guys to keep up on yeah. and that it makes your family room here feel mm -hmm. a little bit more put together, a little more relaxing and peaceful.
Yeah. Well, thank you for letting us help yeah. with the toys today. And uh, maybe I'll touch base with you down the road and you can let us know how it's working. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you so much. And so, of course, we wanted to know how Nolan was going to respond when he got home and saw a bunch of his toys missing. And so Jackie emailed and this is what she had to say. Thank you again for helping us tackle the toys. I wanted to follow up and let you know what Nolan said about his toys. Nothing. He has not said one word about any of the missing toys. This morning, he has been playing for an hour and a half with just his garbage trucks. He was never able to entertain himself for more than 15 minutes before. We can't thank you enough and we're motivated to tackle other rooms in our house now too. That is just so cool. And, and that was my hope. It's been my experience with our kids as we've researched it, other parents that I hear from. And so our encouragement to you is to go further with the toys than maybe as comfortable, highly simplify them, and then your kids will be occupying themselves for hours on end too.